Welcome to Family and the Beast channel. My name is Janet and this is Chloe Lingen. <laughs> Chloe is our taste tester. Remember all the ingredients and measurements that will be listed down below in the description box. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hi everyone. In today's video, we will be making some fried karaila and shrimp. Here's a look at my karaila. I already chopped these and I kept one. Here's a look at what Karaila is. For some of you who don't know what it is, they're also called bitter melon. Um, to prepare this, you just have to chop it in the middle. Once you cut down in the middle, you're just gonna scrape the seeds out. Now once you get the seed out, you're going to just chop these very thin. And this is what you will get. Now you're going to add this to your bowl. So once you're done chopping your karaila, the next step is adding some salt. Now I'm going to add my salt because the salt will help to release all the water the bitter water or the bitter juice from the karaila and now that you have your salt in there you're gonna just massage it in and help speed up the process releasing the juice and if you feel you want to add some more salt you can go right ahead because we will wash this off You can allow it to sit for a bit too and it will release the juice. But I just like to squeeze it out like this. This is how the juice comes out. And that's what we're trying to get out. So you want to take this under your water and you want to allow the water to run over it and just massage it more to get more and more of that bitterness out um, but I will advise you to put this in a strainer because once the bowl get filled with water then everything start running over um, so I will be washing this and I'll come back and show you what to do when I'm done washing my karaila I am going to add it a little bit at a time in this little mesh bag that I have here. I always keep this bag to do things like this. If you don't have one like that, you can just use a tea towel or a hand towel to do that. And now I'm gonna just wring it to get all the water out of it. You wanna wring until you don't see any more water coming out. Now after you're done, you'll just open the bag and empty it on a cookie tray or anything flat that you have. And we're going to spread this out. Now I'm going to do that to all the remaining karaila I have in my bowl. And after I'm done, I'm going to air dry this for about, uh, about four or five hours. The longer is better. Not overnight because you don't want the karaila to get ripe. Sometimes when you leave it overnight, you will find that they start getting yellow and they melt. Just allow it to dry. You don't want it to be too moist. So, and that's how you prepare the karaila, guys. I'm just gonna place this on the side now. And I'm gonna work on the remaining that I have. And then I'll put them to air dry. So I'll show you the next step in about four to six hours from now. Hi everyone, welcome back. So it has been that six hour or more. Um, my karaila is nice and dry. I'm gonna place this on the side. And the other ingredients you will need to put this recipe together is some oil for cooking. I have some tomato paste, some chicken bouillon, complete seasoning, 
adobo accent and over here I have some complete seasoning and some paprika this is what I'll be using to season my shrimp and here I have my shrimp I have some onions I also have some red onions tomatoes and here I have some scallions and this is just the roots I'm going to be using in this recipe I really don't like to use the, the scallions itself but I really like to use the roots so um, if you would prefer to use the roots and the scallion the whole string you can go ahead and do that and here is my green seasoning that we will be using as well so our next step is heading over to the stove and heating up some oil but before we do that I will add in my paprika and my complete seasoning to my shrimp and we'll just mix this in and make sure that it's combined so now that this is combined we're gonna place this close to the stove so I'm gonna turn my stove on to medium high heat and I'm gonna add in my oil I will be using quite a good amount of oil in this recipe but in the end I will show you how to get rid of it so now that our oil came up to a nice hot temperature we're going to add in our shrimp now you want to allow your shrimp to fry on both sides for about three minutes um for this recipe i want my shrimp to be nice and crisp so i'm keeping it a little bit longer in the oil I'm not sure if I mentioned, but I did cut my shrimp in half. This is how I cut them. I hope you can see it. But I just slice them right down in the middle. And I'm going to turn this around and make sure that it fries until it's nice and crisp. So now that this is nice and crisp, we're going to just take this out of the oil now. We're just going to add in the rest. So just remove the burn part from the oil. And we're going to be using the same oil, so no need to change. So our next step is adding in our green seasoning. Our tomato. And we will add in our tomato paste as well. Now I'm only using this amount of oil to fry my corolla because I like when my corolla is nice and loose and crispy. Now we want to make sure the water from the tomato and the green seasoning is dried out completely. We don't want to add any extra water or moisture to the corolla while it's cooking. Otherwise it will take a longer time to give you that nice crisp loose result you're looking for so i'm going to raise my stove to help me dry this out faster but if you prefer for your corolla to be wet i know a lot of people still like their corolla to be wet when they're cooking it they don't mind for that looseness that i'm talking about um you can just add a little bit of oil you can start with about uh three tablespoons of oil and that will give you the result you're looking for but be mindful it will be wet and like i said earlier i will show you guys how to get rid of the oil in the end now this process should take about five to six minutes before the water dries out from the tomato and all the seasoning we have here so now that you see the oil starting to separate from the seasoning you know that the water has dried out. 
So I'm going to add in my Corilla. So now that I add in my Corilla, I'm going to add in my onions and I'm adding in just these onions. I kept the red ones for last. Now you're gonna mix this in and make sure that it's all combined. And right after, you're gonna add in your accent, your complete seasoning and your adobo, and your chicken bouillon. And you just wanna mix this in. Now another tip to help you have that loose result is not to cover it. Once you add in all that salt, and you cover it, then the corilla begins to lose more water if you cover it. So what I do is I it on high heat. I'm not really afraid too much of the burning because I'm using a non-stick pot. So the heat will be high. I just have to pay close attention to it. So. Just know you will have to do that as well. So we're going to just allow this to fry and we're going to keep a close eye on it. I'll let you know exactly how long I kept it after adding all the ingredients together on the heat. So this has been 10 minutes in the cooking process and it's getting to where I want it to be. I'm going to add in right now my red onion and my scallions. So now that the onion and the scallions are combined, we're just gonna add in now our shrimp. Now at this time, you wanna taste to make sure you have enough salt. And if you do not have enough salt, you can add some. I, however, I'm not using any salt in this recipe, but if I do need to add some more salt, I will use the adobo as a salt substitute. And look at how nice and loose this is. Still can get a little bit more crispy, but I'm gonna leave it just like this for now. So at this time, you can just turn your stove off and allow it to cool down before you serve. Oil to get rid of the oil, all you'll do is pull your Corilla to the end. And there's not even oil in the bottom. Um, but what I like to do is still just keep it up in one corner and I would allow the oil to drain down to this end. Then I'll just hold it with a, with a cloth and I'll dip the oil out from here. Or if you don't wanna do that, you can just put it in a strainer over a bowl and whatever drips out, you can just throw it away. But as you can see, my Corilla absorbed all of the oil. So at first it may appear to be a lot of oil, but trust me in the end, you will not have so much and if you do just do as i say put it in a strainer and just allow the oil to drip off bye everyone